All right, guys, let's talk about one of my new EDC handguns that I've really been enjoying. And honestly, a gun that I wasn't even really expecting to get. And essentially, I've been getting a few guns here of late and having fun with it, especially kind of uh, moving a little bit on from the knife collecting scene. Still have some really great knives, but I've been getting a little bit more into guns here of late, as it probably surprises nobody. But um, this is a really cool firearm, like I said, recently, re semi recently acquired. And honestly, I have been really enjoying the heck out of. So I thought I'd go over some of the quirks, the features, really do a in-depth uh, video about the SIG 1911, especially because there's not too many videos on YouTube really talking about these guys. And unfortunately, um, guns like this one, this is the Emperor Scorpion 1911, um, have been discontinued by SIG. And I, I want to say that's probably because they're not or never really were super popular. But I think that the SIG 1911s are actually probably one of the better deals for 1911s, at least right now, because these guns, like I said, they're discontinued and that's because no one really liked them. They never really caught on, but they're still quality 1911s. They have really good triggers to them. They have really good hammers. And there's a lot of things, like I said, we're going to go over the quirks and features in just a minute um, that make these guns really, really nice users. And as far as shooting goes, as far as accuracy is concerned with these guns, very, very accurate handguns. And like I said, really good shooters. They um, have an excellent point to them and while a little bit aggressively textured um, for actually carry and use these are really fantastic guns so like I said let's go over some of the quirks and features of this one first so um, one thing to point out these did come in 10 mil and 45 ACP mine is of course in the Lord's caliber 45 ACP and of course these are some um, underwood ammo extreme penetrators here in this magazine and I like to blend um, a good mixture of either Hornady's Critical Defense 45 plus P ammunition or Underwood Ammo's uh, um, Extreme Penetrators, which are also a plus P loading. So for me, I think overpressured rounds are pretty much if your firearm can handle it the way to go. I run plus P and plus P plus in my Springfield Prodigy. And of course, like I said, in this gun, I run plus P. Um, ammunition. I think overall it's just for most modern firearms. They can handle these pressures. They can handle like the, the chamber pressures of these and the added performance is very nice. You can get um, some pretty hot loadings for 45 ACP and you can also get some pretty hot loadings for 9mm plus P plus. Um, so anyways, I digress. Let's talk about some of the quirks and features. So first off, some of the features of this gun are pretty typical for a 1911. Now, like I said, these guns were discontinued about two years ago, I want to say. You can still find some stragglers for sale on different online uh, retailers, but for the most part, they're pretty much discontinued. At least the Emperor Scorpion is. There are, I believe, some 1911s being manufactured by SIG, but they basically look like this. Um, now, the Emperor Scorpion is the highest tier of 1911 that they ever made, um, but for the most part, they all basically look like this. There's the TAC Ops, and once again, very similar to this. Now, in my opinion, the Emperor Scorpions are in the slightly more desirable color of kind of a bronze Cerakote or bronze and black. But as far as it goes, you're dealing with just straight up Novak sites. You do not have a red dot um, cut out for these, which is a little bit of a bummer because pretty much every one of my handguns at this point has a red dot on it, at least the ones that can they have a mount for a red dot, have a red dot on them. Of course, like I said, this one doesn't have that. And I don't really want to butcher this gun, to, you know, send off the slide and have it cut for a red dot. I'd rather just leave it like this. And of course, I can definitely shoot very well, very accurate with iron sights. Um, that's how I grew up shooting them. So I don't have a problem with it, but a little bit sad. But of course, like I said, um, these guns were made um, predominantly in the late uh, 20. Uh, 20 teens so before red dot sites were really like the fad so you're not really going to see anything too crazy in that regard now a lot of it's pretty usual expected fanfare you have a um what i actually like a shortened 
ambi safety selector on this guy so of course i said ambidextrous but it's very short much shorter than springfields or colts or really anyone else and i like this because these um, safety selectors are still very easy to hit while you are you know like coming up out of a draw very easy to switch on and off of course super positive very tactile as you guys can hear there, super positive, super tactile. But what I like about them being short and stubby is that they, when you actually carry this in a CCW holster, um, you can see that there's not much safety there to really get snagged on anything or to act as a protrusion, stab you, hurt you, um, do anything like such. So I really do like that about these kind of uh, snubby safety um, selectors. Now, on the other side, on the flip side, unlike a lot of 1911s, the SIGs actually have an extended um, slide catch here or slide release. And with this slide release, without really having to break your grip, you can effectively drop the slide or lock the slide back, whichever you're trying to do. Um, you can very effectively do that without having to break your grip. And that's something that I actually really like. And uh, SIG is actually the only one that I've seen so far um, in the 1911 space that's actually actually made a slide drop like this. And I've actually tried to purchase these slide, um, these slide stops from... Other uh, like vendors and stuff, and of course, because these guns are discontinued, the um, slide stops or slide releases, whatever you want to call them, are unfortunately discontinued as well. So they're very hard to find, but I really like them, and it's actually a shame that these never really caught on because most of my other 1911s, you have to kind of, if you want to do it one-handed, you kind of have to break your grip like this to kind of just reach around and hit that slide release to get it to drop or to get it to lock. So. I think it's a really kind of sad thing that this never really caught on because like I said, this is very excellent, very long, and very easy to hit without having to break your grip. Other things of note, um, like I said, it's very well textured. This is super aggressive G10. I want to say Hogue makes it, but it's not necessarily mentioned anywhere that who the maker of the G10 handles are. And then of course you have a super aggressive um, cut here for your fingers. Now, some people I have shown this gun to, they think it's actually a little too aggressive and Sometimes I do agree this is a very aggressive grip, but the nice thing is, once again, if you're drawing this, shooting it, um, and your life depends on it, you're definitely not going to, as long as you have a decent grip on this, it's definitely not gonna break out of your hand. So super aggressive texturing. Of course, your back strap as well is textured in the same way and is G10. And then the other thing to note about these grip panels um, or these uh, handles here is that they are flared and extended. So you guys can see where the frame of the 1911, just like on any other 1911 ends. And then you have these flared G10 um, kind of ramps, if you will. So it helps you as I fumble a reload, helps you even if you're coming in at a bit of an off angle, you know, a bit of an awkward angle, it helps you kind of just get into that um, magazine well and get you in there. So very nice um, and you definitely don't have to be exact with this gun and that is what I like. Now one thing of note is that you do want to be mindful of what magazines you run with this type of uh, grip on here because SIG sends you ones that have a little bit longer base plates so that they stick out from the handgun a little bit so that if you had to rip a magazine out you actually could um, but if you have a reasonably flat or if you had like a stock 1911 you know with that flush fitting base plate that would definitely sink inside this magazine well because this is an extended magazine well so if you're running any of the like chip mccormick magazines like you should be doing um <clears throat> these magazines or the magazine base plates will work just fine the chip mccormick ones are long enough so um definitely just run the right magazines <laughs> and uh, i will say that broadly speaking with any 1911 run the right magazines because 1911s are not typically unreliable handguns so long as they're well cared for and so long as you have the right magazines. A lot of times if you go cheap on the magazines, you will pay the price. And uh, yeah, unfortunately magazines for 1911s are just basically Chip McCormick magazines or Wilson Combat. But if memory serves, Wilson Combat's magazines are just Chip McCormick magazines. So just buy those uh, anyways. Um, now some other kind of quirks and features to the handgun. So you have a super extended uh, 
magazine or not magazine but backstrap safety and this makes it if you have literally any grip on this gun um, super easy to depress you also have a very nice flared and narrowed um, kind of beaver tail to this so with some 1911s it's very thick very beaver taily but this is very slim once again this is nice because when you have this gun in a um, holster like this and especially if you're like me you like to carry appendix this is going to be the protrusion that stabs you in the gut so having this very well rounded and um, kind of narrowed here makes it a little bit easier against the body meaning that it can lean a little bit closer and overall it's it's pretty comfortable i don't have any issues with it i've appendix ccw this gun now do keep in mind this is a government sized um, 1911 so you have the full sized frame you have the five inch barrel so this is not a small thing um, I don't know if you know someone would necessarily want to CCW this it's not the most friendly CCW gun but it is totally functional and if you have the right body frame and the right desire you definitely can carry this so getting into the last kind of quirk and feature something that a lot of people don't talk about is magazine or sorry um, holster compatibility and that is because the biggest crux and the weirdest part about the SIG 1911s and I think the reason why SIG 1911s never really caught on is everything about these guns is great. You have a great trigger, you have a great uh, hammer, once again great um, side release, great mag release, great um, really everything but these guns SIG had to just had to insert themselves with this gun. So what I mean by this is if you look at the profile of something like a SIG P22, or P220, P226 um, or any of their kind of like SIGs, like Hallmark handguns, you'll notice that they have these very bulbous, very thick slides like this one. And when SIG did the 1911, they did the same thing to the slide. So on a normal 1911, the essentially shoulders here are far more recessed and it's almost like an arch. Whereas this, if you can see the platform is very thick, you have these very broad shoulders here. And one that makes this 1911 definitely look very weird, very SIG-ish, because essentially if you are familiar with the 226s or like I said the 220s or anything like that, you'll notice that this is a very reminiscent um, front shape. This looks very, very similar to most of those platforms. And it definitely does not necessarily scream I'm a 1911 if you just looked at like just the slide and nothing below. So that is kind of weird. Now, in my opinion, the extra slide mass adds to the weight and makes this gun recoil like really slow, really nice. It's just a very, it's a very smooth experience, very pleasurable. Um, but the other issue with this is because you have this more bulbous um, shoulder area here, when you go to holster this gun um, first off good luck trying to find a normal 1911 holster that will work for this because you won't find a normal 1911 holster that works with this slide the way that this slide is it's just enough different that like I said if you grab something that works for something like a Springfield or a Colt or a Nighthawk or anything like that this will not fit as well in those holsters so on top of trying to accommodate these extra shoulders you also have to try to accommodate a full rail and that's something that not a lot of holster makers do so if you're trying to find holster options unfortunately the holster options are very limited and to kind of put even further emphasis on this because these firearms are now discontinued there were never a ton of sig 1911s to begin with whether it's the tac ops the emperor scorpion or any of the other variants or flavors there were never a ton of these to begin with so the problem really compounds that it's very hard to find good holsters really any holsters for these guns even this one right here is technically not for specifically a sig 1911 it's for full frame um, or full rail sorry uh, 1911s and i was able to back these screws off enough to get it to accommodate that shoulder but i had to back these off pretty substantially so i it would accommodate the girth of this slot so like I said take it for what it's worth you can find some holsters but the holster options out there for this gun are unfortunately very scarce because of its non-traditional um, frame shape so keep that in mind um, overall that's kind of the biggest bummer to these guns is sig really just had to fucking make this a sig instead of making it a 
just normal 1911. <laughs> but aside from that, it is the same kind of bushing takedown. So if you do want to take this gun down, you, know, you pull this or push this in, slide your bear or um, your bushing, sorry, and uh, <clears throat> your barrel and spring will come out. And uh, of course, you know, you bring this guy back, you pop your pin, take it out that way. So this is a really nice 1911. I do really like it. Once again, I still EDC this gun. I think it's a cool gun. And um, it's, it, in my opinion, if you want to get into really quality 1911s, um, you can find these used on the secondary market for under a thousand dollars, which still is not cheap. I found this one or got this one for, I want to say about $900. And, um, by no means is that a cheap handgun or a 1911, but for the quality of what this is, this is going to be you know easily rivaling any of your Springfield TRPs operators. It's going to be easily rival rivaling any of your Colt governments um, in trigger, in weight, in size, in feel, in quality, reliability, and on and on. Um, this is going to easily rival anything that's in its price range very well. And so the fact that you can find one of these for $800, $900, hundred dollars and it's going to be punching at the weight of a you know mid you know 15 16 seventeen hundred dollar handgun um, I think that's really the value equation that I like the most so if you want to get into a quality 1911 something that like I said, is a freaking tack driver that's fun that's 45 or 10 mil if you choose to go that way um, this is really I think a real a great starting point and like I said gives you the the feel the looks and the overall performance of a 1911 but with sig's backing and sig did a great job with these 1911s even though like i said they're a little bit weird and bulbous um they did a great job with the 1911 and it works well shoots well is just overall a great gun and uh I definitely have no problems with it. I enjoy the heck out of it. I carry this one, like I said. And um, yeah, overall, I think that's about all I can say on it. This gun is a lot of fun. Every time I go out to the range, I run a significant amount of rounds through this because it just, once you get it up, it is that typical 45 ACP of just, it has recoil, you're gonna notice it, but it's so slow, so methodical, and so much fun to shoot, so. Anyways, wrapping it up, that's kind of the quirks, the features, the weirdness of this gun, and just overall the SIG Emperor Scorpion 1911. And uh, I, it is definitely a shame that they discontinued these guns, but because they did and because of the way the market is right now, if you want to get yourself a quality 1911 that punches well above its weight, if you can find one of these on the secondary market for, you know, 850, 900 bucks, um, originally these guns went for, you know, over 1200 and the quality and everything I can see having owned, you know, um, 1911s that are in the mid, you know, $1,500 price range, this is easily punching at that weight of mid $1,500, or sorry, mid uh, $1,000, so $1,500, 1600 gun. This is definitely not gonna be any Nighthawk Custom um, or anything like a Cabot gun, uh, kind of 1911. This isn't quite at that polished level of those, but it is very quality and definitely a gun that you could use to, you know, depend, save, you know, protect your life with. This is definitely on that level, so. Um, that's really all I have to say about it guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video as always. God bless and I'm out.